Since 1953, Mercedes-Benz has produced their mid-size executive car, known officially as the E-Class, with the facelift W124, like this 1994 Mercedes-Benz E500. 25 years since, this E-Class still remains the core luxury sedan in our marketplace. Our retrospective is on this 2019 Mercedes-Benz E450 Formatic and how it's evolved over the last five generations from this 1994 E500. A lot has changed in 25 years. I mean, this is still, for me, the quintessential Mercedes. The design language in the 90s was superb. And you can tell right away it's Mercedes. I mean, just look at it. You know what it is, and you know it's the best of the best. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the W213. It's just this is so special for most people, not even diehard car enthusiasts. Just people in general know about this car. And we're going to be talking about it in a full episode of Test Drive Spotlight. So don't worry. If you want to see more about this 94 E500, we've got you covered. I know normally with the retrospectives, we just focus on the new car, but we have the chance now to do the old one. But let's talk a little bit about how these two cars have changed over the last 25 years. The W124 was the first to have the Formatic all-wheel drive system from Mercedes-Benz. It was offered as a sedan, wagon, coupe, and cabriolet, and we featured a number of those. We had a sedan and the cabrio a couple years ago before we moved out to Quebec. So we've got the E500 now. It is the top line, not the hammer, but the velvet hammer. We'll talk about that more in our spotlight. And it was the most successful Mercedes-Benz produced, period. They sold tons of these vehicles, which is why you still see them on the road today. Not only do they sell tons of these cars, but they're also super reliable, especially if you maintain them, they will last forever. And a lot of vehicles in the W124 family have hit a million miles. So if you buy one, it should last you, especially if you take care of it. It was designed by Bruno Sacco, legendary designer for Mercedes-Benz. He penned some of the most gorgeous vehicles they ever produced. And that's why it's still one of the most sought after cars today, especially this one, the E500 is the top of the line. And I'm not saying that this won't be a future classic, but let's be honest, it's not gonna be the same way that this is. If you get maybe the E63, you'll be in business, but the E500 is still the best of the best for that generation. So let's talk a little bit about how they differ between the two of them. The E500 uses a V8, has 322 horsepower, 354 pound-feet of torque. How does that compare to this E450? Well, pretty close. It's a bi-turbo V6, has 362 horsepower, so 40 horsepower more, and 369 pound-feet of torque, so 15 pound-feet more. But believe it or not, on paper, they would have been very close if both were new, zero to 100 kilometers. I think it's about a tenth of a second difference between the two of these, so really darn close. The W124 uses a four-speed automatic transmission. Times have changed a little bit here with the E450. It uses a 9G Tronic automatic transmission, almost double the gears, but with the transmission on the E500, you don't have to worry too much about maintenance down the road. They are pretty solid. Now, both cars are really inspired by the S and C classes, especially this generation for the W213. For the most part, the E class has been a little bit different, especially compared to the S and C classes. But if you look at some of the classic cars we've done, like the W140 S class and the original W202 C class, you can see a lot of design cues between them. The headlights, the front grille, back end, very similar. Not the same, but similar enough. Same goes for the new one. If you were to see the S class and C class parked beside this, unless you're a diehard enthusiast and saw the badge on the back as well, they do look pretty similar. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute when it comes to the new one. But how has the dimensions changed? Well, <laughs> obviously the new one is bigger. You can see from the video here that we have, it is just a bigger vehicle overall. 139 millimeters longer wheelbase on the new one, 173 millimeters longer length, 56 millimeters wider, and also 58 millimeters taller. However, the W124 is 165 kilograms lighter. And that's kind of based on an estimate for this. Obviously, there's a number of options and tech on this, but for the most part, it is a lighter car. But let's talk a little bit more now about the E450 and all the information that you need to know if you're in the market for this. But you can still watch the full episode on this E500. We'll have a link at the end of the video for that. So let's talk a little bit specifically about the W213 here. It has the full LED lighting system, the AMG body styling, and then $1,000 for the 19-inch AMG twin five-spoke rims. You also have the Intelligent Drive package, which is $3,000, adds active distance assist, evasive steering, blind spot, lane keep, lane change assist, and route-based speed adaptive cruise control. 
You also have the premium package, which is $3,900, adds the panoramic sunroof, the 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster, the Burmester sound system, which is a 13-speaker, 590-watt setup, foot-activated trunk release, power trunk, keyless go, and heated front seats and armrests. This car also has the $1,000 lighting package, adds the adaptive multi-beam LED headlights and adaptive high beam assist. And I have to say that they are some of the best LED headlights we've used. And also the way that the high beams turn on very elegant. They open up sort of like a barn door. Really cool stuff there. $2,450 gets you the Airmatic air suspension. $1,200 gets you climate comfort front seats, which I think should have been included for this price, but whatever. 360 degree camera costs $650. Again, something I think that should be included, but whatever. Windshield heater is $650. The rear seat accessory pre-install is $250. Basically on the backs of the seat backs, you have a place to be able to put in something like a tablet holder or a coat rack holder. Heated rear seats, $550. The sun protection package, which adds the side sunshades and power rear sunshade is $750. So for the most part, it is pretty well equipped, not fully loaded, but also you can go up to something like the E53 or E63 AMGs, but this is about as good as it gets when it comes to a non-AMG model. And I have to say that the exterior look is really good. Very similar, obviously, to what you get on the S-Class and the C-Class. Easiest way to tell this apart from the C-Class is the dual LED strips for the daytime running lights. C-Classes just have one. These have two, but overall, I think it's a really good look. With the AMG package, you don't have the hood ornament. It is a sport grille with the Mercedes emblem in the front with all the active cruise control sensors and everything behind that. And overall, I think it's a really good looking car, especially in this iridium silver color. I wasn't 100% sold on it on paper, but now seeing it in person and driving it around over the past couple days, excellent color choice. I really do like it. It is business formal. You blend in a little bit, especially here in Toronto where there's just tons of cars like this, but I do like the color. But let's talk about the interior. This has black leather. You can have Napa leather. It is available as well as a Artico dashboard. This one's just a plastic dashboard. You have the dark ash wood open pore trim. Looks really nice, especially with the rest of the black interior. Gives the inside a good look, especially if you like dark interiors. I personally prefer color, but it works really well with this setup. 64 color ambient lighting. You have different modes, single color modes, as well as dual modes that can change color. Looks really nice. Not as over the top as the S-Class, but still really good for this size of vehicle. Dual zone automatic climate control. Again, one thing that might be a little bit of a miss, there is no third zone in the back. At this price point for an executive car, it really should have it. You have the 12.3 inch infotainment system as well as the 12.3 inch cluster computer. Mercedes dual setup there. Command will take a little getting used to. I mean, I'm a tech journalist first. We started doing test drive many years after, but I started off as a tech journalist. And I gotta say, man, you need an engineering degree in order to go through this system. Not the most user friendly. And I understand Mercedes wants to make it simpler, but by making it simpler, they've made it a lot more complicated. So you have Blackberry style controllers on either side of the steering wheel, controls either screen. So I do recommend going through the owner's manual and figuring out exactly how it works. So I'm telling you, it will be a bit of a learning curve, especially if you're using an older version of command or if you're coming from a different car entirely, it will take some getting used to. But the infotainment system has navigation, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Sirius XM, and a wireless phone charger. So in my case, because I don't really want to deal with the navigation system and navigating through it, I've been using Apple CarPlay and it works good enough. A couple other features on the inside to note, you have a heated steering wheel, which you would hope to have, has power options as well, with front passenger and driver memory. You also have the power folding mirrors, which automatically close up and open up, and Homelink. So pretty well equipped for the price. We haven't had a chance to drive the 5 Series yet, so I don't really have much to base it on, especially for a 2019 model year. Obviously, we've done a number of older Mercedes models, including the W124 that we've done a number of times as well as the one that we're filming here today. So we've done a number of those. That's pretty much what you can get on this car. I think it's pretty well equipped. I think it compares very well to the W124, especially for a lot of people that was the pinnacle of Mercedes engineering, especially with the E500. So we're really happy that we had this one to feature. Unlike most of the other retrospectives we've done where I've just shown that car off, we do have that full episode available for you. So you can check that full episode of test drive spotlight out on the 1994 Mercedes E500. But let's take this 2019 E450 formatic on the road, talk about how it feels, performs, and handles, and everything else you need to know if you're ready to spend $87,000 on the best or nothing. Hello, you're joining me a little bit later than I actually had filmed. We had some technical difficulties 
I actually filmed a driving segment immediately after the driving segment we did on that W124 94 E500. And the idea was I was going to get into this and tell you a little bit about how it's different in comparison. And we were doing that in Scarborough, but eh, technical difficulties. So now we're in Mississauga. We're going to be talking about the same thing. I just want to mention that when you get into this car, you can feel the lineage, the heritage between the two vehicles. Excellent ride quality. Interior noise levels fantastic on both cars. And much like Mercedes has always sort of done, they don't make the cars obnoxious, at least not this level. So you don't hear the engine, you don't hear the exhaust. It is a subtle vehicle, much like the E500. But what can I tell you about this car? I mean, for $87,000, you expect it to be pretty darn good. And it is very smooth and comfortable on the road. Interior here feels a little bit bigger on the front than that E500 did. But there's a crazy amount more tech in here. I mean, we've got dual zone climate control, the dual infotainment systems here. And that's probably the thing that I like the least about the car. The rest of the car is fantastic. But these screens here, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of it. The system, in theory, should be great. You have controls on the steering wheel, so you're able to control either screen. And Mercedes wants it to be a safer experience. People need to be less distracted by this technology. But the problem is, it's just overly complicated. So there is a huge learning curve to figure out how to use it properly. So I really recommend going through the owner's manual, spending time with it. If you actually are serious about this car or you're purchasing it, just spend time going through the system because it's not my favorite system. You need to figure out how all of these controllers work. You have the two Blackberry nipples on the steering wheel, controls either screen, two different style of touch interfaces and rotary interfaces here, as well as more controls. So you just gotta get used to it. It's gonna be a learning curve no matter what. But besides that, this is a very nice interior. Mercedes continues to excel when it comes to their luxury-oriented interiors. It's super nice in here. You still have physical buttons for your HVAC controls, quick link buttons for things like your navigation, phone, or even the car settings, and then some other features down here in the center to be able to control things like the sunshade in the back or raising the ride height with the aromatic suspension. So there's some stuff going on there. Again, you'll have to get used to it, but I do like it. It works really well. Once you figure out where everything is, you can do it without having to look down. So I'll give them credit for that. It will just take some time. How about this engine, a V6 twin turbo? Not bad at all. That's the direction that all of these cars are going in. We're getting smaller engines, smaller displacements, less cylinders, but because they're putting bigger turbos or more turbos or superchargers, you get more power out of it. So it picks up speed well. We're in sport plus mode gives you the most sporty experience with it, puts the suspension into sport mode, steering's a little firmer, though I don't feel a huge difference between Comfort and Sport Plus, but the throttle response is what you'll get the most out of in Sport Plus mode. So you can give it some gas and you're up to speed at no time, and even in Comfort mode, this thing is just insanely quick. If you're on the highway, you're doing 110, and you need to get up to pass somebody, you're into danger territory so quick with this thing. And it's not even the AMG, it's not a baby AMG. I mean, this is just a regular E450, so I can only imagine how an AMG would feel of this generation. It's gotta be insane. But one of the big things that Mercedes was pushing with this car is their semi-autonomous driving mode. You can enable it if you option it with the little steering wheel button on the left, and then when you set your cruise control, it will use the semi-autonomous driving mode. Similar to other systems that we've used where it will basically use the active cruise control and keep assist systems, but it takes it a little step further. So if you're changing lanes, it will help you nudge you a little bit into that lane. So for example, I'm gonna do it here, pushes you in a little bit, and the signal will flash until it's completed the lane change. Even if you have it set up for just three flashes, it will continue to flash until you're in the lane you're supposed to go into. And that's the only problem. I find that sometimes you're in the lane, usually you're supposed to signal and it stops flashing once you're halfway through, but sometimes I find you're completely in the lane and it still flashes up to seven times before it'll turn off. So some people might think that you're trying to continue over when you actually aren't. So just a small little thing like that. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, not the end of the world though. Some people are gonna use it. You can turn it on or off. I've been testing and it does work pretty well. It does have the stop and go feature for the active cruise control. So as you approach a stopped vehicle on the highway, it will stop and it will continue to go when it's ready to go. So it's a system that we've used in other vehicles before, but with the added feature of the lane control system, it's kind of neat. But that's the thing, you're getting the best of the best when it comes to the E-Class here. Yeah, it's not the AMG, so you're not getting the full balls to the wall experience, 
But if you compare it to older generations, you can see that there's more refinement. There's certainly more technology. They're making this more luxury oriented, even though at 87,000, the dashboard is a hard material and there's no third zone climate. You can option the Artico dashboard if you want to. Backseats still aren't gonna get climate control though. But I really do like it. I can see myself driving this on a daily basis. It's comfortable, you feel relaxed, and you don't have to worry too much about the outside world. It's quiet in here as those AMGs rip along, like there's some sort of AMG meetup that I wasn't aware of, but everything on the outside world, nice and quiet, listen. Can't hear much, just the turn signal, that's about it. Since we picked up this E450 up in Mississauga, I wasn't able to test it on our 100 kilometer fuel economy test loop, nor would the economy we reported make any sense based on our usual testing. So in this case, we've skipped it. By the time you're watching this episode though, we'll have had the 2019 Mercedes AMG E53 Coupe in the studio, where we'll be able to do further testing. But let's talk about our likes and dislikes. The E-Class's multi-beam LED headlights are incredibly well engineered and provide an unmatched level of illumination out of its 84 individual LEDs per unit. The enhanced safety technology like the pre-safed sound system that emits a safe pink noise via the audio system to help prevent any damage to the occupant's hearing if a collision is imminent is also excellent technology. The interior design and layout is top level luxury and what we would expect from Mercedes-Benz, with a familiar layout from the 2016 C-Class we featured a few years ago, which feels natural when reaching for specific controls. The 13-speaker Burmester sound system provided excellent audio playback through Sirius XM or Apple CarPlay, though we expect the 25-speaker 1450-watt Burmester 3D sound system would be mind-boggling in comparison. Finally, the overall ride, drive, and performance of the W213 E-Class continues to prove why Mercedes-Benz is the leader in luxury. The experience isn't sporty like a BMW, but refined for ultimate comfort the way you would expect a Mercedes-Benz to feel. But the W213 isn't perfect, especially after we drove that Mint E500 W124. First off, command is incredibly convoluted, with too many different controls and interfaces for the dual screen setup. Now we've seen MBUX in action and it feels more of a slight facelift over the outgoing command, so we're not expecting great changes with the next Mercedes we have booked. We also found the system was laggy when switching between some menu systems. The lack of a third zone climate system is also a miss for us, along with the overall rear seat space having slightly tighter dimensions over the W124 that we featured. Finally, I also had problems with audio streaming from my phone, with weird distortion on some tracks through Bluetooth as well as connected via USB, whether through the USB source input or acting as Apple CarPlay. On top of the E53 we have booked, we also have the new A-Class sedan on our schedule, so I'll have more time to fully investigate some of the infotainment related problems we had during our week. Overall, the W213 is a technical masterpiece in terms of safety, luxury, and engineering, but doesn't live up to that legendary status the W124 has. 25 years on, the 1994 E500 remains an example of what Mercedes engineering offered and helped push the industry forward. A car like that will continue to increase in value and will be sought after by enthusiasts forever, whereas this 2019 E450 won't share the same destiny. Times have changed, there's no doubt about that.